Welcome. My name is Emily Mitchell, and I'm here with my colleague, Paul Whitley. Today we're going to be discussing considerations for third-party reprocessing of single-use medical devices. Reusing single-use devices that have been safely reprocessed by a third-party reprocessor can enable healthcare providers to maintain high-quality patient care while saving on costs and reducing medical waste. Reprocessing of single-use devices started in the early 1990s and has gained significant momentum since then. Validated functionality testing must be paired with validated cleaning, disinfection, and sterilization processes to ensure safety and compliance of regulatory requirements. In this webinar training session, it is appropriate for design teams, quality assurance and regulatory personnel, and anybody interested in learning more about single-use device reprocessing. The knowledge gained from this presentation will aid in the safe and effective reprocessing of single-use devices. Today we'll, we will be discussing what categorizes single-use device reprocessing, what does single-use device reprocessing entail, regulatory requirements of single-use device reprocessing, cleaning test pads and validation, and disinfection and sterilization considerations. Some important definitions include, a single-use device is a device that is intended for one use on a single patient during a single procedure. An original device is defined as a new, unused, single-use device. Reprocessed with respect to single-use device reprocessing means an original device that has been previously used on a patient and has been subjected to additional processing and manufacturing for a purpose of, the, of an additional single use until the end of its use life. Various categories of devices that are commonly reprocessed include non-invasive skin contacting devices, non-electrical invasive externally communicating devices, and electrical invasive externally communicating devices. Examples of non-invasive skin contacting devices include pulse oximetry, oximetry probes, compression sleeves, EKG and ECG leads, blood pressure cuffs, and pneumatic tourniquet cuffs. Examples of non-electrical invasive externally communicating devices include bisectors, graspers, arthroscopic shapers and burrs, and orthoscopic blades, bits, and burrs. Examples of electrical invasive externally communicating devices include electrophysiology catheters and cauterizing devices. According to a study by the Commonwealth Fund, if hospitals nationwide adopted single-use device reprocessing programs cost savings could be up to $540 million annually, or $2.7 billion over five years. One of the leading third-party reprocessors claims to divert more than 2.9 million pounds of medical waste from landfills each year. We're using single-use devices that have been safely reprocessed by a third-party reprocessor can enable healthcare providers to maintain high-quality patient care while saving costs and reducing medical waste. The reprocessing cycle or model for simple use device reprocessing typically follows a physical path. In this model, devices are collected from the healthcare facility after use and transported to the reprocessing facility. The devices are then sorted, cleaned, and identified. Following cleaning, devices are reconditioned or refurbished and function tested to ensure proper operation. In certain cases, the device may receive a final clean and disinfection prior to packaging and labeling. After packaging, the devices are sterilized and redistributed or marketed to the healthcare facility. This cycle may repeat multiple times depending on the number of reprocessing cycles a device has been qualified for reuse. Regulatory requirements for third-party reprocessing mandate the development and validation of processes to refurbish the device to, to substantial equivalence as compared to that of the original device. 
Because the device was designed as single use, reprocessing instructions are not developed and therefore require post-market development by the third party entity. A validated functionality test must be paired with the validated cleaning and disinfection or sterilization processes to ensure the safety and efficacy of the reprocessed device. The expectation is that a third party reprocessed single use device follows the same life cycle of an original device, including packaging validation and file compatibility testing. Failing to have these validated processes in place may have a detrimental effect on the patient's health as well as expose the firm to regulatory impact. The US FDA considers third party reprocessors as medical device manufacturers and therefore they must comply with 21 CFR Part 820, the quality system regulation for medical devices. Furthermore, the FDA requires third party reprocessors to register the operation type as reprocessor of single use devices for 21 CFR Part 807. If the firm is marketing outside the United States, ISO 13485, the international standard for medical device quality management system, applies as well. Additional guidance, documents, and standards apply to third party reprocessing. The FDA recommends using guidance from the Medical Device User Fee and Modernization Act of 2002, commonly referred to as MDUFMA, along with the enforcement priorities for single use devices reprocessed by third parties and hospitals. Because a single use device is manufactured by an OEM but typically reprocessed by a third party, additional label, labeling requirements are instilled. These requirements are found in the labeling recommendations for single use devices reprocessed by third parties and hospitals. Additional standards commonly used for third party reprocessing are the technical information reports developed for reusable devices. TIR 12 and TIR 30 provide guidance for cleaning or reprocessing validation for reusable medical devices and can be applied to single use device reprocessing as well. <clears throat> Even with these recommended standards and guidances, there remains a lack of detailed reg regulatory guidance, requirements, and specification for reprocessing of single use devices. Therefore, the expe expectation is that the third party reprocessor develops a risk based approach to, to device reprocessing. The risk based approach should be developed in accordance with, with relevant standards such as ISO 14971, the risk management of medical device standard. A variety of single use devices are considered to be reprocessed safely and effectively. The US FDA has compiled a list of single use devices known to be reprocessed or considered for reprocessing by third party entities. For listing of these devices, refer to the FDA's website by searching for single use devices known to be reprocessed. There are many steps to consider for reprocessing single use devices that need to be addressed, assessed, and validated. These steps include family grouping, cleaning, refurbishing and functionality testing, packaging, disinfection or sterilization, and biocompatibility. We will be going through each of these in the upcoming slides. The first step is to determine family grouping. Attributes such as materials, characteristics such as lumens and blind crevices, difficult to clean and sterilize areas, and the clinical use of the devices must be assessed. To start this process, Group similar devices together as a family. Next, in each family, determine a worst case device. That device will be validated and considered the master product of that family. This step requires a lot of justification to compare and contrast the devices. To start the process of validating the cleaning procedure, we first need to define what clean means. One de definition of clean is a visually free of soil and quantified as below specified levels of residuals. Another definition is the removal of contamination from an item to the extent necessary for further reprocessing or for the intended use. Devices must be clean enough to allow for successful subsequent disinfection or sterilization steps. 
Transfer or, of organic soil from one patient to another must not occur. Devices must be cleaned appropriately between patient use to prevent accumulation of residual soil and the development of biofilm after multiple cycles. It is important to create a test plan and establish justifications, including acceptance criteria, and to conform to regulatory trends using a risk-based approach. All the items that are included in the cleaning test plan are protocol documentation, risk analysis, all of the test method rationale, justifying sampling numbers, test results and interpreta interpretation, including a conclusion. Cleaning and sterilization processes must be developed and validated. All single-use devices must undergo additional post-market validation requiring both reprocessing and functionality. Because single-use devices do not come with reprocessing instructions, cleaning and sterilization processes must be developed and validated by the third-party reprocessor to ensure patient safety. Many cleaning processes are water-based. Every reprocessed device should be evaluated for cleanliness. One of the first steps taken when considering which processes are necessary in cleaning a device is to assess the level of patient contact and determine the residual soil characterization. Questions that need to be asked are, how is the device used on the patient? and how much organic soil or bodily fluid comes into contact with the device. Answers to these questions will determine, will determine the level of cleaning that the device will need. For example, a device that only has incidental contact with a patient might require only spot cleaning. Devices that have more contact with patient secretions may need to, have, uh, fully they need, need to be fully immersed in the detergent undergo an ultrasonic soak, or require manual brushing. Other factors to be considered include the appropriate cleaning procedure and the justification of the acceptance criteria. These factors will form the basis for the cleaning validation along with the validated parameters. Visual inspection must be part of the validation as well as routine cleaning. Visual inspection may require the use of magnification or a boroscope to observe internal lumens and other hard to see areas. Many cleaning processes are water-based. Therefore, it is of significant importance to determine the appropriate quality of water to be used in the cleaning process. Water system design, validation, and monitoring are crucial <coughs> to ensure the water grade is compliant with regulatory specifications. A couple of valuable resources regarding the use of water in reprocessing medical devices and production process controls are the Amy TIR Informational Report, number 34, and 21 CFR, part Reprocessed single use devices must remain substantially equivalent to the performance of the original device. As discussed, the original device specifications are typically not available for third party reprocessors to develop design files and accurate functionality testing. Therefore, specifications for physical, mechanical, and electrical attributes must be reverse engineered and developed through baseline testing. These newly developed specifications must be verified and justified to ensure the single-use device can be adequately reprocessed to a level that can confirm the device performance as intended, as intended. Furthermore, all yet design changes need to be identified and accounted for in a timely manner to maintain the adequacy of the reprocessing design specification and associated functionality testing. Standard packaging design and validation needs to be conducted on every device type or product family. If sterile, the packaging design and validation will need to be conducted in accordance with the relevant standards such as 11607 Part 22, with considerations given to transportation and shelf life studies as well. It is not uncommon for a third party entity to follow packaging configurations previously developed by the OEM. 
With regard to disinfection and sterilization, research should be conducted to understand how the device was initially marketed by the OEM as well as how it's used in the hospital or clinical setting. Due to the exposure to a hospital setting, devices may run the risk of being contaminated with microorganisms associated with hospital-acquired infection. It's not uncommon for a device that is marketed as non-sterile by the OEM to receive high-level disinfection or even sterilization when being reprocessed by a third party to eliminate the possibility of transmission of these infectious organisms. Sterilization or the degree of disinfection should be part of the risk management system and are based on substantial equivalence or based on the risk of potential microbiological contamination. Disinfection and sterilization processes and validation should be conducted in accordance with the relevant standards. The biological safety evaluation of reprocessed and reuse device is required as well. Biocompatibility assessments evaluate potential biological responses based on materials of construction and potential and process-related impact to the medical device. It's not uncommon in practice for third-party reprocessors to consider the material portion of the assessment already completed by the OEM. Therefore, the reprocessor's responsibility is to test for the reprocessing aspects that would potentially impact the device's biocompatibility. The motivating factor driving the demand for third-party reprocessing of single-use devices is a desire to provide safe and effective care that is also economical, ultimately benefiting the patient. Additionally, medical waste and inflows can be reduced by a significant amount. Paramount to these efforts is validated functioning, functionality testing, cleaning process, and disinfection of sterilization process. Establishing substantial coolers of the reprocessed single-use device, the original design, demonstrates the finished device is safe and effective for use. This concludes today's discussion, considerations for third-party reprocessing of single-use medical devices. Thank you for joining us for this webinar. We hope you found it enjoyable and educational. If you have further questions or comments, please feel free to contact Emily or myself through email or phone via the contact